Oh yeah, Harry, what's up? Yeah, I was just sitting down and starting doing a video. Oh, you want me to do a review on wings? Oh yeah, definitely. This is gonna be a great video. Yeah, I'd like uh I'd like to place an order of twenty five hot wings, crispy. I'll pick up. Chris, not chicken wings. We're talking about the lack of drivers coming back from wings with a Z. Oh. You mean wings rideshare? Yeah. That's right. We're actually going to be talking about Christoph, the CEO of Wings with a Z, not chicken wings. And we're going to be talking about why drivers aren't coming back as well as what Wings is. Hey, everyone. My name is Chris and welcome to the Rideshare Guy. So Christoph Bumbach just did an interview on Cheddar News very recently talking about why Uber and Lyft drivers are not coming back to the platform as quickly as Uber and Lyft want them to. If you want to check out this interview, link is going to be in the description below. And I do highly suggest checking this out because he really nails it right on the head when it comes to why drivers are not coming back. And what's nice to see about this is he actually knows this. He understands it. And being a CEO of another company that is dealing with transportation, well, you have the option and the ability to make sure that the problems that Uber and Lyft are facing when it comes to their drivers don't have to happen when it comes to the drivers of Wings. And if you want to know more about Wings, we are going to be talking about that in just a moment. Now, one of the things, though, that he did not mention or bring up when it came to a factor of why Uber and Lyft are not necessarily sharing the revenue when it comes to the fares that they're collecting. And this is based on fares that are higher than normal because there's less drivers on the road. So that's what causes this dynamic pricing or the surge pricing that we all know. And Uber and Lyft are collecting a lot higher of a percentage when it comes to this dynamic pricing because there's less drivers on the road. So they can jack up prices, but they're not sharing that with drivers. A reason why they're doing that and not necessarily sharing it with drivers is this whole path to profitability because these companies want to become profitable as quick as possible. The only thing is they got to take care of their drivers. Otherwise, they're not going to come back. And that's what's happening right now. But again, other than that, it was a really good interview to see somebody who is influential in their own company being the CEO being able to talk about these things when it comes to these other companies. These other companies have to face this. They're going to have to at some point. Otherwise, it could be a disaster. All right, again, if you want to check out this four-minute clip on Cheddar News with Christoph from the CEO of Wings, make sure you check the link in the description below. And also, let's talk about what Wings actually is if you are looking at becoming a driver for Wings. And it's always good to have some real competition. Now, Wings is not new to the game. In fact, they've been around since 2011 and was founded in San Francisco along with, well, Uber and Lyft. But the big news when it comes to Wings is they took some of Uber and Lyft's pitfalls and actually made it their strengths. And if you want some really great information, make sure you check the link in the description below and it'll take you to the blog of the Rideshare Guy that is going to give a lot more information that I can get through in this video today. First, let's talk about what makes Wings different. Now, the drivers are considered personal drivers and are expected to provide top quality customer service. All the rides are pre-scheduled with at least two hours in advance. So that's a much bigger difference than an immediate ride. And drivers are able to plan their day according to the trips. And because of this customer service oriented approach, Drivers are able to pretty much hand out business cards and create their own clientele. So if you're a really good driver, if you have really good customer service skills, this might be a really good option for you because you'll be able to pre-plan your trips, be able to know when and where to go, and you'll make a little bit more money doing it than Uber and Lyft. At least that's what it seems. Which brings us to the next one. How much do Wings drivers actually make? Well, that's a little bit hard to answer because these are pre-planned and pre-scheduled trips. It's not something where you get a ping request for an immediate trip. So it's going to be a little bit different there. But let's look at an actual individual who is driving for Wings right now. So Peter, who is a rideshare driver for Uber, Lyft, and Wings, reported that Wings is by far his favorite platform to work on. For the week of July 19th through July 25th, Peter earned a total of $1,859 on the Wings platform alone. Between all three apps, he was averaging a total of $51 an hour for that week. Now, here's how the pay breaks down for Wings drivers. There's a $4 platform fee per ride, 
and 5% of the shareable revenue for favorite driver bookings and 12% of the shareable revenue for general bookings where the driver was not favored. What's shareable revenue? Glad you asked. Well, shareable revenue is everything Wings can share, and it's not going to include airport fees, financial fees, insurance, but everything else is shareable. But what about tips? What about tolls? Well, I'm glad you asked that one too, because it goes directly to the driver and Wings does not take any of it. So right off the bat, it seems like there's a lot more transparency. Now let's talk about what cities does Wings operate in. Currently, they're operating in Austin, Dallas, Houston, Los Angeles, Miami, Orlando, Phoenix, Portland, Sacramento, San Antonio, San Diego, San Francisco Bay Area, and Seattle. Wings, come to my market, please. I'd like to add that. Now, unfortunately, Wings is not available in my market, and I hope it does come soon because I'd love to have another platform to be able to use. And I do like the aspect of having pre-scheduled trips and also being able to tailor it to my schedule, which would be really good. Not only that, the ability to actually create a clientele is going to be pretty nice. So you can have a lot more uh, control over about what you're going to be making, who you're going to be driving, and a few other things. So now, if you're in one of these markets and would like more information on being a driver for Wings, well, you could click the link in the description below. Now, some of the differences between signing up for Uber and Lyft and Wings is that the processing time generally takes longer with Wings. There's also an additional required in-person info call process that you're going to need to attend before being allowed to start the onboard process. Other requirements include that you got to be 21 years old, own a vehicle in good condition that's less than five years old. That vehicle also needs to be a small or large SUV, minivan, or luxury sedan. You will need a phone like an iPhone or an Android. And again, if you want more information on Wings, make sure you click the link in the description below. And any questions, put in the comments below. Also, are you driving for Wings? Have you tried it? Is it available in your market? Or are you somebody who wants to try Wings that's not available in your market? Put what market it is and maybe they'll listen. All right, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell for notifications so you'll be notified every time new videos are uploaded, including different companies that you might not have known about. And with that being said, I got to go pick up my wings. I'll see you guys. Drive safe, everyone.